multiple programs, we will also want to add in error handling. But how do we handle errors that we detect? That's where exception handling comes in. Have you ever been using a program and when it crashed, all it gave you was some number code that wasn't helpful at all in diagnosing the problem? Passing around error codes used to be how programmers would find errors in a program, though not much use to the user, or maybe even to other programmers using a library that throws codes. This is why C++ programs return zero at the end. Traditionally, if something went wrong, you would return some number other than zero to represent which error occurred. If your program returns zero, then it means everything is okay. This isn't a great way to handle errors, though, and languages have since evolved to have more built-in error handling. So we have exception handling. What kind of errors do we need to look out for, especially when it comes to structures built to be used in multiple programs? Think of the times your programs have crashed during runtime. Out of bounds access to an array, dereferenced a bad pointer, maybe doing some bad math, and so on. When we're writing a structure, we want to make sure anyone using our structure won't have the ability to crash the program with it. The C++ standard library has a family of exception types. So while you can pass around human-readable error messages as strings, you can also pass a specific type of exception, and that is more program-readable. Then, when the program using your structure detects the exception, it can look at what type of error happened and then respond appropriately. Some of the built-in C++ exceptions are the base exception class, a logic error and a runtime error exception class, and some more specific exceptions like invalid argument, out of range, overflow error, and so on. Here are some descriptions of the exception types. So for example, you could have invalid argument saying that a value passed in as a parameter was not accepted by the function. You could have something like a length error or an out of range error, where with an out of range error, maybe you're going outside the bounds of an array. And so instead of letting the program crash by going out of bounds, you throw an out of range exception instead. And here are the descriptions for the runtime error family of exceptions. With an overflow error, you end up with a number that is too big to store in the destination data type, such as if you are adding two very, very big integers and you go past the maximum integer value. Underflow is if you have a number that's too small to store in the data type, and a range error type. There are some additional types of exceptions, including exception types that were added in the 2011 and 2017 updates to C++, and you can view a full list in their descriptions at the C++ reference page, cppreference.com. You can also make a class that inherits from any of these to make your own exception type. As an example, let's say we are writing a structure to store students, which contains an array to store the data. The array here has space for 10 elements, so the indexes 0 through 9 are valid. We also have functions to get and set student names, allowing the user to pass in an index. Without any error checking, something can call the getStudent or setStudent functions and pass in an invalid index, which would be something less than 0 or greater than 9. When the program goes to try to access a student at an invalid index, the program would crash. At the same time, a basic error check isn't always sufficient such as this function that returns a value. If the user passes in a bad index, what do we return as the required string? Nothing? An empty string? The text error in a string literal? Also, how do we communicate with the caller to let it know that something went wrong? Instead of trying to return some default value and otherwise not doing very good error reporting, instead we can use the throw command and throw some type of exception. In this case, we can throw the out-of-range exception, which is part of the C++ standard library. And we can also include a string message with that exception to give some more information on what went wrong in a human-readable way. If the exception is thrown and nothing in the program catches that exception, it will at least be reported when the program exits. 
However, we can also write code to catch an exception, to resolve it, and then move on so the program continues working properly. When errors are encountered in a piece of software, crashing and exiting isn't always an option. If your video game crashes and exits in the middle of a competitive multiplayer match, it is inconvenient but not life-threatening. A crash here is acceptable. However, if software is driving your car, or controlling the amount of radiation a cancer patient is receiving, errors need to be taken care of. It is best to deal with the exceptions, make sure the program is still in a valid state, and continue running after the cleanup. When we're writing functions, we can specify some exception guarantee to let users of our work know how safe any given function is. The levels of exception safety are the no-throw guarantee, also known as failure transparency. So with these, operations are guaranteed to succeed and satisfy all requirements even in exceptional situations. If an exception occurs, it will be handled internally and not observed by the clients. The second one is strong exception safety, or also known as commit or rollback semantics. Operations can fail, but failed operations are guaranteed to have no side effects so that all data retain their original values. Number three is basic exception safety, also known as the no leak guarantee. Partial execution of failed operations can cause side effects, but all invariants are preserved and there are no resource leaks, including memory leaks. Any stored data will contain valid values, even if they differ from what they were before the exception. And fourth, there's the no exception safety, where no guarantees are made. There are two parts of working with exceptions. The inside, where we're inside of a function and it may have an error, and when we detect an error, we throw an exception out of the function. And then there's the outside, or the place that is calling that function which may have an error. We try to call the function, and then we catch any exceptions that occur. When should you add an exception throw to your function? When you're doing your error checking. You might not be in the practice of checking for errors, such as bad user input, bad pointer addresses, or other things, but we will have error checking in our data structures. Whether your code is being reused across multiple programs, or you're working with multiple people in one program, or even working alone, you should get into the habit of checking for errors and handling them appropriately. Some examples of errors to look out for are validating function inputs, so are the parameters within a valid range, validating that objects are initialized, so for example with a dynamic array, is the pointer pointing to null pointer or is it initialized somewhere? If we're working with a file, has it been opened for reading, or is it closed? Was there some sort of error with it? Checking whether we are outside of bounds to see if the index is within an accessible range. Making sure that memory is okay to free before we use the delete command. Or even checking to make sure a denominator is not zero before we do some division. To implement throwing exceptions, declare your functions as normal. If you're 100% sure that a function won't throw an exception, including via other functions being called within your function, you can mark it as no accept. In the function definition, do some error checking, and if you detect an error, use the throw command. To use the exception family of classes, you'll need to make sure to include the stdaccept library. Your functions can also throw multiple different types of exceptions as well, based on what you're detecting. When creating a function that can throw exceptions, we might want to add a specifier to that function. Now, in C++03, or the version from 2003, you would specify what kind of exception would be thrown, such as here where we have throw out of range after the main header of our function declaration. However, this throw function specifier has been deprecated as of C++11, this means that you can still use this, but it may be removed or replaced in future versions of C++. In C++11, instead of specifying what kind of exception this function may throw, 
we instead specify whether this function may throw an exception. So we can use the noExcept specifier to specify definitely this function will not throw an exception. If the function may throw an exception, we will just leave that off. It isn't enough to just throw an exception when you detect an error. When a function that might cause an exception is called, the caller needs to listen. If the exception is thrown, the external code needs to catch it. Just like we can throw different types of errors, we can also catch different types of errors and even catch multiple types of exceptions coming from one or more functions. In order to detect exceptions, we must wrap a portion of code within a try-catch block. We can have as many catch blocks as we need with one catch per exception type, but there will have to be just one try per try-catch block. You can still have multiple try-catch statements in your program, though. When we are working with a function that may throw an exception, we can wrap it within the try-catch block. If any exceptions are thrown within the try block, then the code within the catch block for the corresponding exception type is executed. The base exception class contains a what function, and that returns a C string of the error message. If we don't have a catch for a specific exception that will be thrown by the function, the exception can be caught by that exception's parent or ancestor. In this example, the top function throws an invalid argument exception, but the bottom function is only listening for logic errors. Since invalid argument is a type of logic error exception, it will still be caught and handled. So here's what it looks like when I run the program and the exception is still caught, and the program continues running. Because exceptions are part of a family tree, you can use the parent exception as the default catch if none of the other catch statements grab the exception. However, make sure you put the more generic exception types after the more specific ones. So, catch a normal exception should go on the bottom so it doesn't preempt the more specific exception handlers. Using inheritance, you can also create your own exception class by inheriting from exception or any of its children. However, this isn't super relevant to our class, so I'll just go over this really briefly. First, you create an exception class, then you can throw it from a function, and you can catch your special exception in a try-catch. Data Structures class is all about writing structures that store, maintain, and organize data. These aren't standalone classes that would just be used in a single project, but something to be used across multiple programs. Therefore, we need to make sure our structures are stable. Additionally, you need to know how to listen for exceptions, as functions from other libraries, including the standard template library, will throw exceptions in some cases.